Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room, the longest time series on most of our channels, my bedtime book of two minute stories. It just keeps going, ladies and gentlemen, like the Energizer Bunny. Uh, though I think we are starting to get into the home stretch. If you look at my bookmark, we are over halfway. We're actually maybe two thirds. Hmm. So anyways, my bedtime book of two minute stories, edited by Rosemary Garland, illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Today's stories are Petros, Pietro, Pierre, Pedro, Pietro, and Pitor. Yes, that's all one story by Margaret Connor. And Peter Penguin, also by Margaret Connor. Another double header and one complicated title and one simple title. But all a lot of peas. This is going to get ridiculous. Well, they're, both stories are about Peter. I hope we don't Peter out. <sighs> Should I punch him, ladies and gentle colts? <sighs> uh, I'd rather not be punished that way. <laughs> I told you it was going to get ridiculous. Oh, this is positively awful. So many puns. Oh, so little time. Let's continue. So, Petros, Pietro, Pierre, Pedro, Pieter, Pietor. Spell it how you will. In English, they all mean Peter. I get it now. <laughs> Pietro is Italian. He lives in the beautiful city of Venice. His daddy is a gondolier. Sometimes he lets Pietro come with him when he takes visitors for a ride in his gondola. Pietro likes this because his daddy sings as they punt along the canals. There are lots of canals in Venice and many bridges over them. Pietro lives near one of the best known bridges called the Bridge of Sighs. Oh, it doesn't go in order. <laughs> Pietro lives in Holland near a pretty Dutch windmill. His daddy grows tulips, red, white, and yellow and lovely blue hyacinths and golden daffodils. In the spring, Pietro and his mother have a ride in Daddy's barge along the canal which runs through his fields. They sit among the flowers that Daddy has picked to sell at the market. Pierre is a little French boy. His daddy owns a vineyard, and in September when the grapes are ripe, they are picked and loaded into a cart drawn by oxen. Everybody is very happy when the grapes have all been picked because then they can have a holiday. They all dress up in their best clothes and sing and dance through the village streets and taste the wine made from the grapes. Isn't that a little early? Wouldn't that be last year's grapes? <laughs> or the year before? It really depends if you want to make wine or not. Well, it says they're tasting the wine made from the grapes, so it kind of has to be last year's. English Peter has a cuckoo clock. He loves all clocks. He lives in London near Big Ben which is a very famous clock. His daddy is a taxi driver, but Peter likes to ride on the top of the big red double-decker buses. Sometimes he visits the Tower of London with his mother and sees the beef eaters in their scarlet uniforms. Petros is a little Greek boy. He lives in the port of Pieris near Athens. His daddy is captain of a steamer. Petro spends most of his day on the wharf looking at the gaily painted boats moored in the harbor. Sometimes he sits and listens to the exciting stories told by his fishermen friends while they mend their nets. In the spring, his daddy takes him on his steamer across to the island of Poros to see the beautiful lemon trees in bloom. Petros will be a sailor when he grows up. Peter lives in Germany in the Black Forest. His daddy is a wood carver and makes weather houses and cuckoo clocks and lots of toys. Sometimes Peter helps him in his workshop. Some of the toys are sent to England, where little English Peter sees them in the toy shops. Pedro is Portuguese and lives on the island of Madeira. His daddy has a bullock cart and takes holiday makers for rides in it. Pedro's family do not have much money, but they are happy to live on this sunny island, which has many brightly colored flowers growing everywhere and plenty of banana plantations. Pedro's mother is a flower lady and sells her flowers from a big basket which she carries on her head. She wears a gay red dress and white boots and looks very smart. And so we come to Pietor, who lives far away in Russia. 
His daddy is a manager on a big farm, and Pietro does not often visit the town. In winter, when the snow is very deep, Pietro has to wrap up in lots of warm clothes, and if the family need to travel very far, they ride in a trochia, which is a kind of sleigh, drawn by three horses. You know, I only got confused in two of the Peters. I'm going to leave that where that is. By the sound of it, it was talking about this Peter twice, but it's actually this Peter with the cricket bat that's never mentioned, and this Peter with the cuckoo clock, because there's a cuckoo clock in two of these. Because they took time to make connection between two of all of these boys because it was English Peter and Peter who had the connection because English Peter had the cuckoo clock and Peter in Germany was the one whose father was a woodcarver. But the art is all very nicely done though Pedro feels a little awkward to me based on his stance and the way they drew him. He's just a little flat. He looks the most like a cardboard cutout compared to the rest of them. The rest of them have like perspective going on and I like how some of the drawings are connected like the first Peter. I'm not even going to bother with the names because I will butcher them. Okay, the Italian one. The Italian one and that one. The French one. The French one's handing the Italian one the grapes. And the Holland one is sitting on the ground in between them. And the English one looks like he's waving over at the Russian one because they're both in waving poses. I couldn't quite see the arm because of the angle I was looking at the book. <laughs> and then the Greek one is looking over towards the Portuguese and Russian ones. And the German one is looking back towards, well, since he's seated, probably the Holland one. Yeah, and another odd thing I noticed in the stories is why is Flower Lady quotationed? Why, why is it emphasized that way? Is that like a proper title or something? Because it, it almost sounds like they're indicating something. Well, I think it's more something to the region because you notice they also did that with Trochia mm -hmm. for Russia and Big Ben for England. Hmm. And Flower Lady, specifically using My Fair Lady as an example, is usually a woman who sells flowers without having a stand or a shop. Just walks around selling them. So that could be what the indication is. And see, also Beef Eaters, also for London, hmm. for the guards in uniform. Wow. This really isn't so much a connected story as... A series of little vignettes about different boys named Peter. Because they don't even tie it together at the end with the summary. They put the summary in the beginning of spell it how you will. In English, they all mean Peter. Now on to the penguins. Peter Penguin, to be precise. Peter Penguin stood on the snow-covered ice and watched the birds circling above his head. And he flapped his stiff little flippers and wondered why he couldn't fly with them. But he couldn't, and it made him cross. When the other birds flew off towards the sea, he tried to follow them. But with his short little legs, all Peter could do was waddle and hop, and hop and waddle, until at last he fell flop on his tummy. I will get to the sea! I will! he cried. So Peter wriggled and slid and pushed and wriggled, until at last he did get there, all the way on his tummy. There were many penguins in the sea. Come and join us, they cried. Peter Penguin hurried into the water. He found he could swim very well with his firm little flippers. Soon he was speeding through the water. He soon made lots of friends, and most of them were emperor penguins like himself. There are other kinds of penguins, said another penguin called Patty. There are king penguins and Adeli penguins and lots of other kinds, but they don't live near here. Oh, I see, said Peter Penguin. Each day as he grew bigger and stronger, Peter showed Patty how he could flip through the water faster than ever before. Then one day, Patty Penguin said she'd like to go ashore and lay an egg, like so many of the other lady penguins seemed to be doing. I will come with you and help you make a nest, said Peter Penguin. So they both waddled and hopped and slid across the ice to find somewhere to make a nest. But they couldn't find a cozy place anywhere. They couldn't even find anything with which to make a nest. 
At last, Patty Penguin grew tired of looking. I shall lay my egg right here, she cried. She did. She laid it right on Peter Penguin's feet. Don't drop it, she told him. Keep it warm while I go back to the sea to get something to eat. But she took a long time getting something to eat, and it was cold standing there with the egg between his toes. Peter Penguin looked around him. Standing near him were lots of other penguins holding eggs between their feet. Are you cold? he asked them. They all said they were. Then let us hop together and keep ourselves and our eggs warm, said Peter Penguin. Holding their eggs carefully, the penguins hopped in closer together. And there they stayed until at long last their eggs were hatched and out came little penguin chicks. Just as the father penguins were wondering what to do with their little chicks, back came the mother penguins looking sleek and fat and full of fish. Sorry we've been so long. Your turn now, they called as they hurried up. So they took care of the chicks while the father penguins slid off down to the sea to find some food. And when they'd had enough to eat, they came back to help the mother penguins take care of the young penguins. Soon the young penguins were big enough to take care of themselves. So what did they do? One day they all waddled and hopped, and hopped and slid on their tummies all the way down to the sea, just like their parents. It's kind of interesting how they make this out to be a really negative thing in a way. Well, harumph. I will lay the egg right here because there's no other place to lay it. When they've been doing that on their own, it's not like they go harumph and do it anyways. No, that's what they do. And there are other types of penguins where each male brings a piece to make a nest with. You know, there's a whole Don Bluth film about it. And oh. also this very dynamic image of the penguins and the seabird and... None it, of that happened. Yeah, I was just about to comment. It's not mentioned anywhere that what I'm guessing is a seagull of some type is bothering a male and female penguin. It's just not in there anywhere. Nope. The art's really nice, though. It's a really good use of the two-color palette. Because almost all of the green is used for the sky and sea, which is a very good way to use that color when you're dealing with penguins. Because the sea up there is a nice green color, and the sky would reflect that. And this was a really good story to give to the two-color artist because, you know, penguins, black and white. I said the only real problems I have with it is the way the story portrays the penguins. It's like, really? Oh. Like, I don't think penguins think like that. It's, to them, this is like, oh, yeah, this is how my life works. Also, they can get around really easily on their tummies. There's a reason that those things that the Avatar rides on resemble penguins. <laughs> I'm talking about Aang here, by the way. And also, there's a reason that I was going to make a comparison between uh, penguins and humans doing the luge, but penguins are way better at it. I would love to see a penguin go down a luge. That would be like world record speed. Probably. And probably also get PETA down on our heads. <laughs> well, the penguin wanted to do it on their own. Yes, if a penguin happened to wander in and go down the luge, that would be fine. So what did you think of these two stories? Well, I remember the first one better, surprisingly, because this one has animals. And it's not so much that I remember the details of all the different Peters, it's more of, oh yeah, I remember that story. I'd also like to make one more comment about the art. It's superbly done. The penguins are well rendered, they've got great expressions on their face, and that dynamic shot in the corner, which if I remember correctly, that's the shot I'm using. And just, it was a really good choice to go with a two-color artist here. It's just nails it. All right, so this has been another couple of stories from my bedtime book of two-minute stories. Edited by Rosemary Garland. Illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Today's stories were both by Margaret Connor. Petros, Pietro, Pierre, Pedro, Pietor, Pietor, and Peter Penguin. Holy punctuations, Batman. Yes, a lot of alliteration in there positively fabulous <laughs> thanks for listening if you enjoyed this there's a whole lot of these stories specifically from this book we've certainly been enjoying them uh we have other stories from other books books that we read in their entirety because they were much shorter than this also we have a lot of other videos on other topics that aren't books like tv shows and video games and movies and various pop culture things 
so you can check that out too. And if you still haven't picked up a copy of this one, I believe they're running somewhere around 50 cents or so on Amazon. Yep, I've checked recently. Which is funny, because that's exactly what this one ran at a yard sale. It's written on the inside cover. Yep, I wonder how much stuff you would have to get to qualify for free shipping. <laughs> oh, hey, just use this book to qualify another order you have for free shipping. Um, the odds are these are all through third-party sellers, and... Those usually don't qualify anyways. Ah. But, you know, when you're paying 50 cents for the book, $3 for shipping, three fifty for a book, that's not bad. Nope. I didn't actually look at the shipping costs. This is just me estimating. Nobody hold me to that. Yeah, who knows? It might actually be free shipping. Possible. Uh, just feel like doing some random shopping? Yeah, we're still putting the Ebates link in there. Yes, it has nothing to do with books, but why not? Also, it's just me copying and pasting. And usual disclaimer, Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks again for listening.